Hello everybody and welcome back to our Stratclude campaign in Thrones of Britannia. This is Count Amar VHS and in the last episode we had our eyes on the south and I was noting that it could be the case that West Saxa could vassalize Mercia but that does not seem to have uh, happened here. We have an event that popped up. Basically Mercia has decided not to accept and now they are going to war. If we look at the political map to see how this may work out um, I'm, my money is on Wessex to win, but Mercia has a lot of territory, actually. Uh, Wessex does benefit from, from several vassals. So it, it, could be, um, it could be quite the clash, and maybe during that time Northumbria is going to get involved, and so we'll just keep our eyes on it. Um, again, my goals for the campaign are to try to have a fairly small footprint, so I'm not looking to expand all the way down into here. Um, if need be, I could certainly take a couple of provinces down here to complete uh, this province of Cumberland. And I would not also I would also not be opposed to grabbing down as far as York, let's say, or maybe even uh, Leeds, I think it is. Uh, but uh, but yeah, not not really much further than that. And uh, if I don't have to go to war with Northumbria, then I then I gladly will not. And we'll try to go for the fame victory, which will require that we, you know, sort of sit and build and hold on to what we have. Now, the problem with that is that um, we don't have a great amount of food up in this part of the world. And so we will need to have uh, sort of an operating force that is fairly small. I think we can get away with it, though. We've got a full 20 stack over here under our king. And what we're looking to do is to potentially grab any territory that this army of, uh, of Sudriar takes from Kirken. So let's say they sail over here next turn. Well, then we can come down and and grab this. So if they cause a bit of chaos to their south, then we'll try to take advantage. But we also have uh, a 16 unit stack over here uh, in Alt Clute, and we're going to move them up uh, to this part of the world. That's going to be the sort of aim for this episode. Now we're kind of running short on funds. The other problem is, you know, we'll have to have a well developed territory. They can support our armies not only in the amount of food, but in the amount uh, in the uh, amount of cash that we're producing. As we've seen the past few times that we've gotten into diplomacy, uh, the other factions haven't been too willing to work with us, and that's partly because we haven't been spending money on things like gifts or to sort of sweeten the pot when we make any offers. So if we really want to do that, we're going to have to grow our economy too. So that means we're going to have to do some investment in building. Okay, this is an Orkney army. But this is pretty far north of where we are. I don't think they're going to make a lot of headway. Okay, so here we go. This is another event. You are not surprised to find out that some of the Vikings who have settled in Britannia are at each other's throats. This time it is the kings of East Anglia and Northumbria. They have absorbed the vassal lords who had been forced to serve them, and now they intend to battle to the death for control of the East. Once a bloodthirsty invader, always a bloodthirsty invader. So... These two factions, the Viking Great Army uh, factions of East Anglia and Northumbria, declare war on each other and each annexes their Viking vassals. So, as we saw uh, in the previous uh, look at the political screen, there were some, uh, I think it was Holderness and I can't remember the other one, uh, that was uh, another vassal of Northumbria. They had two. And then East Anglia had probably one. Uh, but they're gone now, so they, they've taken over their territories. And so this has really strengthened uh, Northumbria, at least in numbers of territory. East Anglia probably doesn't, uh, doesn't stand much of a chance. So this means that Northumbria may be getting down even further into the south. Again, that's great, keeping them busy and away from us. Right, so this Wait, is just, in a, just, just a sailing army, so we'll... Uh, We'll wait another turn for them to move off somewhere. March on, men. Get up here, and I don't want to jump into uh, this territory yet. Would like to get some military access. Okay, so I think we got the uh, missile specialists researched last turn. Still nothing we can trade in the civic branch. But let's keep going down missile drills and tactics. So this is going to increase our missile damage and ammunition, which is good because uh, in some battles we, we do run out of arrows. So that'll be a very nice addition. Typical low loyalty stuff and governance available. 
Berenice is only at minus one, so I'm not too concerned. We have some buildings underway. Okay, so that is going to help with money, but... Yeah, not really much to do until we start accumulating a greater treasury. So let's see where that army goes. Oh, I was hoping they would go south. Okay. So they're just bypassing the Scottish armies and grabbing their settlements, which is smart. Okay, one of West Sax's Welsh vassals declares an independence war. Okay, interesting. And two of them, I guess. We've got a couple of rebellions going on. That's nice. It'll keep them busy. Okay, great. So Dungarth, our, uh, our general has, uh, let's see, extra ammunition for his men and extra shield effectiveness. Well, that's cool. That's because he was in a settlement with, um, the, with a wood building. So that's uh, right here. And yes, we've got that. Okay, good. So Gwent and Gluisig. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Because this, uh, this could have really helped. They're probably still at war with Mercia, uh, but now they're also at war with, with the, the West Saxons. And this is probably not going to hurt them too much, but I can see that uh, Northumbria is just expanding down into Wales. Very interesting. Got like a couple of big armies down there. No other armies around here, really. Okay, so... Got some big armies circling each other in the north. No. For the glory of the Cymru. Hmm. I'm just going to keep my king here. He can jump into a boat uh, pretty quickly and move wherever opportunity takes him. And in the meantime, we are uh, increasing the muster or the strength of our units. Okay, I'd love to steal this province and then hop over to Iona. So let's check the diplomacy. Uh, we don't have a lot of money. And uh, as we saw last turn, our relationship with them, them is deteriorating. I don't want to open up a war. Sit. Have some ale. Tell me why you're here. Let's see if they would even be willing to consider it for 3,000. Nope. Okay. So, my options are march over their territory regardless and incur even more diplomatic penalties. They're at war with Brevna, which is actually down to just a couple of territories. But it doesn't look like they're feeling very happy about Mead either, who is fairly strong don't know that I want to get into a war with these guys, though, right now. I think we can afford to wait. We'll sort of uh, encamp here, tech up. Secure. And I also, I don't know that we can go this way. I think we kind of have to go past Dunat to get over there. But yeah, I'm not seeing any big armies uh, in my area. One thing we could do, although it would be risky, would be to get on a boat and just sail around. That would be the other option to avoid the diplomatic penalty. And the danger there is that we would run into a Sea King Navy, like this one in a few turns, will be down south perhaps, and could really mess us up. So let's sit tight. We'll keep looking for opportunities. All right. I, we could.
could go for some more food, but that's going to cost us money uh, in upkeep. This would just be a straight increase, which again is probably good. The local sea region here is um, in fourth end, so that's actually all the way up here. So if we, as we sort of increase our campaign movement range for the navies, that actually covers the area that I do want to be going. So let's do this. It's going to eat into our, uh, you know, our treasury a little bit, but I think that makes sense. Okay, and the governor of Loden, who is industrious, which is nice. Okay. We want to go for another level of priest. Yeah, let's do it. I'm a little worried about his high influence, relatively low loyalty, uh, especially if we lose our king in a few turns, as we may, because he's 52. So they lost that. Orkney uh, was not able to make any headway on land. Alright, political gain. This man hungry for power has positioned himself to take office without your approval. Okay, so he's going for the Justicar uh, office, or Justiciar. He may be suited to the task, but can you afford to let his ambitions threaten your family's power? If I do nothing... Uh, he'll just take it. That'll make him more loyal. Um, I guess it, it could have repercussions, but I'd rather not deal with, with minus two influence, so we'll go with that. Just let him take it. I guess I, uh, I had lost that title to a family member dying of old age or something, so... Let's check him out, because that may have solved his loyalty Every issues. Man will do his duty. Yeah. So now he's at four. I mean, he was at two... I guess we have to check it out on the family tree. Yeah, there it is. So plus two to loyalty, plus two to zeal, which is also very nice. I think all the other offices are accounted for. Actually, no, we don't have a... Uh, whatever this is called, like the captain. I do wish you could sort of see what these things are, even if you're not... All right, king's captain. Yeah, so I, I could hand that out if loyalty is a problem, but loyalty is not a problem right now. I'd rather save that for a general, of course. All right, I think Kurgan's going to be just fine. They have three, well, two armies and a, and a small one. I think they'll be able to take back Aberdeen. Um, not sure if there's a, a large fleet of Orkneyar somewhere out in the fog of war, but I'm sure they'll be able to deal with it, or we will if we, we have to. All right, but I'm thinking after this winter, let's move up into the highlands, and then we'll kind of come down. Because we can move through our uh, our allies' territory here. We do have military access with Kirken. My men are the best. All right, so Loden has a couple of turns on a church. And Stratclute. It's been a little while since we've spent money here, although we did just finish the, the pottery kiln. This would be fairly cheap, actually. And that's 20 food. So, yeah, I think I want to go that route.
Alright, Cecily gets destroyed. That's a South Welsh faction, and this is a, a Viking Raider faction. We've got our hunting lodge finished, so that's increasing food as well. Alrighty. Now, up here, uh, we can take him out of his encampment stance and bring him right over to the edge. Now, this province uh, is going to be down at negative two in terms of public order as soon as he steps outside of it. Uh, because we are, he's giving a five uh, bonus to public order. If we lose it, we're going to lose 55 food. We can certainly afford to lose 55 food now. So I'm not too concerned about that. More worried about making some progress you know, in the settlements I want to own, which are over here. And so we'll get our full king stack. It's going to take us a long time, but we'll march up here. Down here, we don't have to trespass at all. Um... Trying to see where, because you can't just disembark or, uh, you know, get into boats anywhere. This is not a place you can get into. It's not actually a port. So it's uh, it's a little frustrating. But we, if we, we could take this, and this would give us a bit of food, because it is a hunting lodge. But the problem is we're, we're kind of stuck here in terms of getting out uh, onto uh, on, onto the the water. I th I think we may have to go like up this way. I don't know. We'll see. And maybe we'll take a turn off from building stuff because we're kind of low on cash. So yeah, let's let's hold off. But since I think that's going to Our be the plan, Away to war. We'll just move our air back down south. All right, he's picked up another uh, point of influence, which is nice. There are these lulls in the campaign, which um, which I don't mind at all. You know, I, I know that is sometimes said. I just read a, a post on the Steam forums, uh, which I check occasionally because there is some there are some good tips there, and there's still stuff I'm learning about the game. Uh, but you know, it was one of the typical posts that pops up. Uh, why is this game so you know so badly reviewed and so on? And uh, someone was pointing out that there's just not a lot to do on the, not a lot to do on the campaign map. Um, and you saw we did just spend a couple of turns not really queuing up anything and just kind of seeing what's going to happen. Uh, but I, I kind of like that. I like these lulls uh, when you're not doing like a battle every turn or even every two or three turns. It just makes it uh, more exciting and meaningful when you do have a battle. And I kind of like just running my empire and seeing what the AI is doing. Um, all right, so these two Irish factions go to war. That's fine. We finished Priory Stores and Missile Drills and Tactics, so now our archers are going to be more effective. All right, so we've got East Anglia uh, going for peace with the factions that are rebelling from West Sax. Let's check this out. Very cool stuff. It looks like Mercia has actually done very well so far in the war, taking back stuff from uh, Gwent. Northumbria is just wrecking stuff in South Wales. East Anglia is not doing too well. Looks like they've got uh, another settlement under siege. But the war between West Sax and Mercia has not been not been yielding too much fruit. We will serve you well. All right, so we get another research to do. So we could go raid for Longbowmen and that may be a good option. Let's see what what that would look like uh, in terms of difference. Get moving. Get him into a city, and then we'll uh, queue up. Every man will do his duty. So if we upgrade you guys, so the the upgrade is going to let's see. Okay, so this tells us what we're going to get. If we go for trained skirmishers, we'll have longbowmen, and so that's going to increase the morale by four, melee skill by one, ammunition by one, missile damage by four, range. Okay, that's yeah, that's important. Accuracy and rate of fire, so I think we really, really do want to do that. Let's go right for that, then. Uh, trained skirmishers. And some more skills. This is our uh, kind of getting up there, Governor of Stratclute. Now, he's getting old enough that I'm 
thinking he may die before my faction leader. So maybe we want to go for uh, for that last quill. Actually, we won't get it, but uh, we will get it next time we can level him up to get right up here just for extra commercial income, which we are getting some of down here. I think we can't afford to build as well. All right, probably Cumberland. Yeah, I think this would be nice. It's going to help with public order, uh, help with fame, which is something we need to accumulate uh, to to obviously to meet the fame uh, victory conditions and help with income. Let the enemy beware. All right. Command us. So, yeah, since everything is looking pretty stable over here, there's not a lot of opportunities for us to exploit. I think we got to move our faction leader out of here. We're going to be dipping into the negative public order in Dunacane, but you know, if we lose it, for the glory of the Cumbria, we'll lose it. Now, is that Dunacan? Is that like like Dunacan Moss, the uh or Dunnectain, which I'm not pronouncing correctly, but is this the place where, what is it, Edgefrith of Northumbria was defeated and killed by, is it Breed or Brood of the Picts? One of those battles. I'll have to check that out. I'm not too certain of my geography, but I'm wondering if that's one of the potential sites. I thought another one was, oh, maybe this is it, Dunnectain. Hmm, which which one is it? Not really sure. Let me know if you if you have any uh, stronger sense than I do about the, the history here. Okay, but I think that'll be good for this turn. I think the other thing that, that has to be said about this game in particular is that it probably appeals to players who like turtling more than to players who like to blitz. Because if you like to blitz, you can do that and you can rush through a campaign in like probably a sitting or two and, uh, and, and you can just be done with it very quickly. But if you like to turtle, if you like the tension, the anxiety of just sitting and waiting and wondering what the AI is going to do and hoping you're building right and hoping you've got enough of an army to defeat whatever's going to come through that fog of war. If you like that kind of experience, and this game does have a lot to offer it, and to, to players who like to, uh, to, to be very aggressive, I think um, on one hand this is going to be both easy because you can expand fairly quickly, but it's also going to be hard in other ways because you can't consolidate and hold the places you've conquered as easily as you can uh, with with other games because if again the, that lack of it's too soon for that. garrisons for those minor settlements meaning you know you can't you can't hope to hold stuff that you're uh, taking unless you leave a you know your army behind in it but I like to turtle quite a bit I like to sort of just build up my empire and just sort of uh, you know hope hope that I'm ready for what's coming all right, I guess we have to take a turn off of building. This army... Yeah, I think this is a good place because this this fleet could be coming for us. I don't think they're at war with anybody else. And actually, our relationship is improving. They like our treaties with Ulaid, which is interesting. And so they're only at war with us, so they have only got to be coming down here. So I've got to um, watch that. Let's see, though. Uh, would you guys be willing? I hope you will not try my patience Yeah, we could today. go for peace right now. Oh, man. Because it's been a while. You know, it's it's been enough time. We beat them in that battle. Um, that was a big army of theirs, and... If I, if I want to protect, like, this part of the map, I do have an army down here. Let's, let's take a look at how big that fleet is. 14. 
and I've got 16. So the problem is, of course, they could go anywhere. They could go here, and they could raid my farms. They could go here, and they could take this church that I just dumped a bunch of money into. They could go down here and attack Carlisle, which is, uh, you know, not, not doing so hot in terms of a garrison. And they could also hit up here at Alt Clute. My warriors will not falter. So let's bring my army down. You know, the best way to defend against that would be to get peace. I could I could basically secure my position and get peace with them and get back to trading with them. Ah, uh, and then work up a relationship with these guys. Because they would like that I made peace with them, and then maybe I could get military access, and then when we go to war again, I could get easily over there. But no, I think I think we want to keep we the war going because we do have uh, we do have an invasion plan. So let's do that. But that, this is one of those you know decisions that uh, that I could be regretting in a few turns. Bravery or strategy. The lords are arguing whether it is better to attack the enemy head-on with pure grit or to fight from a distance with arrows and javelins. What say you on this matter? So we could go with bravery, which would decrease the number of missile infantry units added for recruitment, but add to axe and sword. Or strategy, which does the opposite. Ugh. Or we could do nothing. And then we sort of keep everything the way it is. I don't know that I want to do anything. I think we've got a decent amount of units in our armies, so I'm not feeling the need to do a ton of recruiting. And I feel like also if we, we were to need folk. them, True. yeah, three of these, three of these is sufficient. And I don't want to lose out the Axemen, but I don't want to gain Axemen and lose missile guys either, you know what I mean? So I think we'll, uh, I think we made the right choice there. All right, more skills available. And Owen, the governor of Bjornice. He's a young guy. Um, okay. Now, this is a good place to, to keep going up the priest line because it's a border settlement. And again, I don't intend to necessarily go much further south than this. So slowing the enemy down, um, which this would do, this second tier of the priest uh, follower would do that. That might be a good choice. We could, on the other hand, go for a scribe, but I think this would just be better. It'll help with public order eventually, too. It'll help the, the uh, faction allegiance. So and that, and that is something we need. So, we will do you proud. All right, where's that? Uh, where's that navy? All of a sudden, where'd you guys go? <sighs> that's. We will serve you well. That's uh, that's a little. Get moving. It's a little unnerving. So we're gonna lose some to attrition here, but. Um, I think we're going to get it back. I think we replenish on our uh, allies' territory. In any way, we're going to grab a settlement here in a minute. For the glory of the Cymru, move Let's get out. into Dundomnal just in case the fleet comes out of nowhere. And now we can spend on some more stuff. Maybe this. It's a little, little bit extra income, very little. So actually, maybe that's not such a great option. It's not very impressive in terms of the amount of cash we're getting. Could go here. That's going to cost us 20 food, which we may not have in a little while. So I guess we want to keep going up the food chain, so to speak. Yeah. All 
All right, there's that fleet, I think. Going back up into the north, which is nice. Do not be a fool. Take this chance for peace. All right, I will take it. All right, awesome. Okay, Sudriar is under siege by Kirkin up here, which is fantastic. Okay, I am going to accept peace with Orkney. That's going to drive a bit of a wedge between them and Sudriar. I don't really want any of their territory. Um, maybe they can get me a bit of, uh, hand me a bit of cash. You know when. Oh, we'll try that again. I think they're weak enough that it doesn't matter too much. All right, great. So now we're up to seventy-six food. And Kirkin and Sudri are fantastic. All right, well, let's try that again in terms of uh, war with Orkney. You are not welcome at my door. Intriguing. Payment. <sighs> do I want to do this? Yeah, may let's do I that. Not live? That may hurt my relationship with Kirkin. But I don't, I'm not too concerned about that. No, well, maybe I should be. They've got some big armies up here. But I'm still fighting Sudriar. Every man will That's the thing duty. that they should be, uh... Be kind of happy about. So let's get down... Right about here. Away to war! And what I'm going to do is get into a raiding Put stance together a raiding here. Party. Okay, so that's going to get us a bit more food, income, and everything else. And then we'll move down here. We may also call their attention back here. For the glory of the but that's fine. All right, Can't so that's good. 17-man that. stack. Yeah, they should be just fine with that. I don't think Sudir has anything in the area. Okay, and we have a little bit of cash. So, where to spend it? Cumberland, Loden. No, nope, nowhere, I guess. We're, we've gotten to the higher tier buildings. So, we don't have a lot to throw around. Wow, Northumber's doing really well. Maybe too well? <clears throat> I guess we're going to see. Train skirmishers. Okay. All right, Dungarth has a lumberjack. He cuts down trees. All right, great. So, yeah, better ammunition, better shield effectiveness. That's just a great trait. So, put your generals in buildings, uh, in settlements with wood buildings. Now, this might be another option. Adds extra range for missile infantry units, but it increases upkeep. Decreases recruitment cost, but that doesn't matter so much, really. Um, missile infantry in particular is pretty cheap to recruit, I think. The upkeep is a bit annoying, and so I think for that reason, I'm going to wait, and we'll use this as an opportunity to go somewhere else. Um, I don't think estates... Well, actually, we should. Go for estates, and then go, th go to this one for rural enterprises to get the income uh, boost. This may bring us some cash as well, the Villa Estate Building, once we build one. Alright. So I think what we want to do now men, men. is Get just kind of go quickly towards uh, Dunali. Okay, we could do a decree, but yeah, again, I don't really feel the need. All right, let's go with this. More income, uh, more commercial income, and we are getting uh, you know some some good pieces out of that. Although actually, 
that's pretty substantial right there. Yeah, it cost us 15 food, but I think uh, I think we'll be fine. Because we do have some other food buildings coming along. We've got one there. Uh, I guess that's it, actually, at the moment. So we'll, we'll do that. We'll take another break from building for a little while. And I'm just checking for uh, that Sudriar army, but they're probably going up here. Okay, Kirkin failed to take this settlement. Hmm. I do have a fleet out here. Maybe they're going to head up into the far north. They've declared war on this other minor faction, which really looks like it only has a single settlement. And then Fort Who has emerged. Ho, ho, ho. Okay. Well, that's neat. So this is a, a faction re-emergence, actually. No. So there must have been a rebellion here. Because um, Sudriar had this. Or maybe, uh, maybe Kirkin took it and gave it to... Oh yeah, it looks like they did. They sailed their fleet down here. They probably took this and, uh, and gave it to, you know, a, a new faction, um, which, which you can do. That's really cool. All right, here we go. We're going to actually expand here. A nice three-tier hunting lodge, or tier three. Yes. We'll just occupy that. We will. That got us an extra 40 food and some income. And now, since we're on home territory, we can upgrade these guys to longbowmen uh, with, yes, an extra 20 range, which is just awesome. And we should actually probably do that with our other, other guys as well. Great. Great, great, great. All right, well, I think this is a good point to end the episode. Next time, we'll have to see, because I really want to grab this. Um, and a as I take this, I'm going to need to grab another couple places in order to hold it. Now, unfortunately, one of these is in the possession of Ulaid, and another is all the way up here. So this may not be feasible. We may just take Iona itself and then stop. We'll have to figure out a way to get there, though, because, again... Um, yeah, to get to the ocean here, it's telling me the quickest route is to trespass all the way, all the way down there, and uh, I, that's not really what I want to do. So what we may do instead is head up here, and maybe we will go for for this one, which is a, a mine. Maybe sack it, and then send our fleet back down, something like that, or maybe we will trespass. Who knows what the next few turns are going to bring, but. That will be it for this one. Thank you very much for joining me in this episode. I hope you'll stick around for the next one. Until then, take care, everybody.